Well, good afternoon, fellow ultralight adventurers and affordable plane builders. This is Terry Adair. I'm in Houston, Texas at my hangar with Tango Alpha 1. And uh, as you know, the engine came back and I've been in the process of putting it back together. Uh, posted on my affordable plane and ultralight adventure page that things were not going quite as smooth as I had hoped they would. Can y'all hear that airplane? I sure can. Been airplanes out here flying all day long. Anyway, some of the problems that I was having, and they're not really problems, they're just issues that come up whenever you change things on an engine. And for example, we changed this engine from an air cooled engine to, well, it's still an air cooled engine, but now instead of a free air cool, it has a fan in the back. And of course, that added new cylinder heads, which angle in the opposite direction. Uh, and a new um, box back here with the fan and everything in it. Uh, and when do, doing that, of course, a lot of wires and stuff had to be lengthened so that they could reach their plugs. And also I've been putting these uh, little quick connectors so that uh, later on I can dis disassemble this, pull this out if I need to. Um, so yeah, these, these CHTs, which I'm replacing, I've ordered a new set, and I think they'll be in today. Um, this one right here, I believe on the back, maybe it was the cylinder that was getting hot, actually looks like it was burned up or, or corroded, I don't know, but at any rate, it's working right now, but it won't work for too much longer, and I figure, well, I had to open all of this up to lengthen my wires and get things where I need them to be, might as well do that work right now. Also, what I'm doing while I'm in here is, you know, I've tried to um, tell myself, well, I'm all done with any work underneath this. I shouldn't have to get back in here for quite a while, but I keep having to drill out all my rivets and pull my cover back off as well as my windscreen so that I can get to this. It's just not comfortable trying to slide in underneath there. <laughs> Yeah, my 50-year-old back can't handle it. So, anyway, what I have wanted to share with you guys today, I've got a couple of things here. Let's walk over here to the workbench real quick. And there's my altimeter. Look at that. I plan on putting that in at some point. Okay, so I'm going to take this over here. This is a package containing a rib nut tool. And uh, if you guys are not familiar with rib nuts, uh, these things are outstanding. You know, general aviation uh, airplanes, uh, you just cannot get a break. There's always an interruption. And who is it? Oh, it's damn likely. That dude loves me. He calls me every damn day. Okay, so let's go back to the airplane. So uh, in general aviation, a lot of times what they do with cowlings is they have these um, uh, th th these little fasteners, and basically what they have is they have two rivets that hold them in, and then you got a screw that can go inside of them. I don't remember what they call them. Uh, maybe they call them a Tenerman nut. I don't know. Maybe no. I think a Tenerman nut is something completely different. But anyway, what I wanted to do was something that was not quite as you know exhausting having to drill out three holes for every little screw that I want to put in. So what I found here right on the rivets page is oh, these little things right here called rib nuts. And there is the part number. And with them I got number eight stainless steel full of screws. All right, and uh, there's the part number for that. It's upside down. You guys will probably have to pause the video if you want to look at them. Okay, so what that allows me to do now is go ahead and use these little Phillips screws to put them in. And you can see there's all the rib nuts that I've installed right here on the back. And the way they work, similar to a rivet, you can buy a really fancy expensive tool or you can get this one here which is considerably cheaper. Although for what it is, it's pretty expensive. I mean, I think it was for 20 bucks for this little piece of contraption that uh, anybody with a machine shop could probably create. But what it does is you go ahead and you put your little rib nut, you drill the hole out, you put your rib nut in there, and then you screw this into the rib nut, all right? Now, this is set up 
pretty much ready to go. Um, I've tightened it down and pretty much all I need to do is put my 7 uh, drill on there. Use a drill. It goes so much faster. And then it, as you tighten it, it draws this up which pulls the rib nut and it expands it. Now, I don't know if I can get you behind there. I may be able to do so if I flip you upside down. So bear with me guys. Alright, and I, I have no clue uh, what, uh, <laughs> what it looks like right now from this angle because I can't see the camera too well. But hopefully you guys can see the rib nuts and how they work. They squish down. Now the reason that I put them in here on this side is because number one, you know, I didn't want to go ahead and lock this down with the rib nut itself. When I put the screw in, it will hold everything, including that top piece of uh, panel that goes up here and um, also the side piece right here. So what I do is I just pull this back and I put them in underneath. Now you can see how secure that is right there. That's just one screw holding that in. And I was getting ready to put another one in over here. So I'm not going to do it because it would be too funky trying to do it on camera. Um, but you get the idea. This little tool um, will work with three different size rib nuts. I think number six, number eight, and number tens. And um, six eighths and tens. So a little bit bigger each time. I'm using a number eight. Also keep in mind, depending on what the thickness of your angled aluminum is that you're putting your rib nut in, just like a rivet has a, um, a grip range, these rib nuts also have a grip range. So check the thickness of the metal you need to go through. Um, that was another thing. I can't put the rib nut through this metal and that metal over there and then this metal. It just The grip range isn't long enough. So you just use it through one piece right there and uh, you're good. So uh, that's what I'm working on here with that. Um, a lot of other little things I'm considering doing. Um, as I had mentioned on my last was it a video online, I can't remember, maybe it was just photographed. Um, this is my fan unit here and it draws air into this uh, plenum right here, and um, or this air box, and it, it, it blows air over my cylinders. Now, one of the things that I think I've already mentioned to you guys, um, we did find out the timing was off on this, so that could be con a problem that was causing a, a heating issue, but we also found uh, many seals that were just uh, really dried out and uh, they were leaking so we replaced those as well. Um, what I was thinking about doing here and I don't know if I'm going to have to do it is possibly cutting a little spot right here out just so that air can go through and as you can see when I built my cow or my airplane uh, I think the original plans had foam or something that went over here and I didn't put that in mine. I have a very strong structural base here and even on the bottom of my panel you can see I've got those angle uh, aluminum and uh, they actually slip right up under here and then right up under here. I don't know if you can see that old pencil line with that arrow that. And that gives a lot of support to the top deck. Um, and that allowed me to keep all this open to put any kind of instruments in here that I wanted to do to wrap up my wiring harnesses, uh, you know, my voltage regulators, uh, you know, my little 12 volt to 5 volt DC output, which I use to charge the uh, cell phone while I'm flying, and of course my lighted compass, which is over there. And uh, I even have a little beacon that's down here on the bottom, and we're going to move that because once we put the cowling on, um, that will be in the way. So, along with getting all our cables adjusted and our carburetor slides mechanically synchronized, um, you know, we've just, just been doing a little bit of everything. I seem to be very um, easy to distract today. I even went over to Jerry's hangar and, uh, uh, well actually, I didn't go over there. He came over here and got me. There's a friend of his named Larry who just purchased a Ridge Runner. No, is it a Ridge Runner? No, it's a Kit Fox. I'm sorry. I'm trying to collapse my tripod, guy. 
uh, anyway, he bought a um, Kit Fox, very nice little airplane. But the thing's been sitting for 10 years or so, and uh, it needs a lot of TLC. And you know, to be quite honest with you, uh, I would be very interested in that airplane if he ever decided to get rid of it. But it would have to be at a very good cost. Uh, I don't think I would be willing to pay what he paid for it. But we'll see. You never know. Right now, um, it's not in my wheelhouse, but maybe later on. So we did manage to get the engine started, though. Um, you know, had turpentine for gas, and I noticed that uh, it was, you know, not sucking any fluid through there. So we basically pulled the float bowls off and uh, cleaned them out and put new fuel in there, um, turned the pumps on, primed the engine, and um, got some fresh fuel in, and it finally did crank up. And he ran the motor for a little bit. Um, it's likely that because it has uh, been sitting for 10 years, just like my motor, it was a great motor, but it had been sitting for God knows how long, uh, and I needed new seals, he may need new seals as well. But we'll find out. So anyway, that's about it right now, fellas. Um, I think I'm going to take my muffler out. Uh, I took it off the airplane. The uh, reason being is uh, it's not in horrible shape. But it is getting some more rust on it. Uh, I painted the motor, or I'm sorry, not the motor. I painted the muffler with this uh, VHT, which is supposed to be some like I don't know, very hot temperature paint, and uh, it was okay for a little bit. But you know, the thing I'm realizing is, is I've had this little airplane, this little project, a lot longer than I realized, and uh, it's probably been a couple years since that thing was painted. But there is a, a, a shop uh, in my neighborhood that does, um, oh, what do you call uh, uh, chrome plating and ceramic plating and they even do powder coating. Uh, I think I might give them a call just to find out what it might cost to have my muffler maybe chromed or ceramic plated. I don't know. You know, it's up in the air. We'll find out. Depends on, you know, how much it costs and if it's actually going to be beneficial or should I just go buy some more paint. So uh, we do have the cowling sitting here in wait. It's um, going to be there until uh, I, you know, get, run the engine, break it in, and we'll probably fly it without a cowling on it um, at first. And then uh, once uh, we do a couple of flights and we determine that uh, we have no issues with overheating and the motor's running good, and we've got it broke in, and we'll go ahead and put it on then. Of course, I'm going to have to figure out how to put a little door on there in case I need to charge my battery or something, which is right there. So, okay, guys, uh, twisted your ear long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Uh, remember to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there. Uh, YouTube really likes it when you hit that button, and so do I. So you guys, uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and like the videos. Uh, and hit the little bell. Uh, if you like the videos, hit the little bell and uh, you will get an update every time I do a video. I know it hasn't been a, a whole lot during uh, December and January because, uh, uh, you know, this engine had to be sent out and, and, you know, I did make the cowling over there in that uh, time and did some other little things to the airplane. But uh, I think we're back on track now to start seeing a lot more regular posts. And uh, if you guys want to see them, just hit that button. So, guys, uh, thank you for uh, watching the video, and we'll see you next time. For right now, uh, I'm out of here, guys. So, over and out.